Hey everyone, big news in the world of diplomacy, bigger than Kim Jong-un's waistline even. It was announced that President Trump and Kim Jong-un are going to be meeting in person. This marks a big shift in diplomacy from both the North Koreans as well as the president, who's spent the past year or so conducting international affairs via Twitter with all the dexterity of a drugged horse. The meeting itself could be a set-piece historic event like the Yalta Conference in 1945 when Franklin Roosevelt met with Stalin, or that time when Ronald Reagan met with Humphrey Bogart, and actually not was when he was actor, wasn't it? Anyway, it's a first date of sorts, so perhaps the president will decline the usual offers from CNN or the BBC and get one of the reality show networks like Bravo to cover the event. You know, if things go badly, it would certainly be better for everyone if it ended up with one of them throwing a glass of cheap white wine across the table rather than launching a thermonuclear strike. If we're not comparing Trump to FDR, though, then to who? Kennedy dealt with the Cuban Missile Crisis, and certainly Mr Trump wants to be perceived as a similarly new modern kind of president like Kennedy was. A media-savvy change from a presidential style of old. I don't know if Stormy Daniels is a newer, albeit trashier, version of Marilyn Monroe, although it would certainly not be surprising if the CIA turned out to already be looking to hire, quote, a lone gunman. In more Cold War-style news, though, the Russians have been busy too. Sergei Kripal and his daughter Yulia clapped last weekend in Salisbury, England, after being exposed to a nerve agent. There's 180 military investigators, although obviously at the moment anyone can be to blame, innocent until proven guilty after all, which is presumably why the newspapers have to use the term nerve agent rather than Russian agent. But the backstory is that in 2006, the former Russian military security colonel was convicted by the Russian government of passing secrets to MI6, and in 2010 he was offered asylum in the UK very hospitable for the British government really to do that although you do have to remember that back then the government were still dishing out passports and visas like confetti at a ticker tape parade anyway the government definitely never lies and you can definitely always trust what the spy agencies tell us so I suspect we won't find the truth out until it's all declassified in 50 years time see you in uh, 2068 if you're around for now though if you are a Russian dissident who's been passing state secrets on then try and stay safe you know and see you next week if you like these click subscribe